Oh, yeah, I did say I would watch this, right. Oh, God. Oh, God. So, I sent them, like, a massive fucking document about all this stuff. It was crazy. Like, I even took, like, I, I copy-pasted y'all's messages from chat into the document, and I said, and I was like, oh, I agree with this one, or don't agree with it, or whatever. Hi, my name is Edu, and I'm Atomic Picnic's creative director. You guys might remember that in December, mm -hmm. we had our Bad Mushroom publishing announcement, yep. and an amazing playtest, which you guys played Atomic Picnic for hundreds of hours, and That's also sent us over a thousand pieces of feedback, which, by the way, I had to read through everything by myself. Jeez. Oh, man. So thank you for that. So thank you for that. Oh, man. We also received a lot of feedback from Asmongold, Soda, Aspen, and other OTK creators. Oh, boy. And those we can't ignore, right? Oh, As jeez. Well my boss and all that. Mm -hmm. So now that we're gearing up for a new playtest from April 10th to April 17th, I wanted to shed some light on what we've done with all those pieces of feedback up until now. Okay. Okay, so let's start by talking about some map improvements we've done. During Mr. Gold's playthrough, we were all excited watching when right at this moment we knew we fucked up. Although there was plenty of space on the sides for him to go back up, the way cylinders work create this illusion of walls, making it seem like there's no way to climb back up. Also, the walls from where he fall off were so high that you actually had to spend two charges in order to go back up. So, we took a step back and realized we need to do some map changes to try and mitigate players falling down. And if they fall, make sure they can easily climb back up. Yeah, I totally fucked that up. I remember whenever it happened, I was like, oh my god. Yeah, I felt like a fucking idiot. As you can see, mm -hmm. that's much better, right? Mm -hmm. And of course we didn't stop there. We took this time to look at other parts of the map that people were falling over, or that had other issues, like flow, that we wanted to improve and make better. So let's talk about air control now. During playtest, we received a lot of feedback about how our air control felt very tight, and you didn't have uh, a lot of control while in the air, right? So, pretty simple to fix that. We just go into the air control options, go into the values, change some values, and we're done. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't quite like that we ended up hitting some snags and yeah i basically uh i don't know how this works but i said they should fix it and i guess they fixed it that's crazy we had to yeah. prototype a lot to actually fix that issue and it was like to me like this is the thing with like any game that we publish the only thing that i really play it for is to make sure that it plays well like i'll talk about like systems and like other stuff but like really it's about a vibe check does the game play extremely well because if that doesn't happen, then what the fuck? Ended up function first, yeah, exactly. Remake the gameplay the police, yeah. Control system from scratch. Movement so important it is. Basically, two months to do. Yeah. Let's oh, talk geez. about weapon balancing now. We've received a lot of feedback about balancing issues, right? But yeah. the biggest thing was about slowing down when shooting. One of the reports that we got was actually from Mad Mushroom. They found that the player was still getting slowed even while reloading. This wasn't intended, of course, so we fixed it. As you can see, the player on the bottom video is much faster than the player in the top video. Not yeah, only sure. that, but we also took some time to rebalance every single weapon in the game. Some weapons, you were getting slowed down by 70%. Jesus. Now, weapons don't oh, like the sniper, yeah. 20% slow. While we are talking about weapons, oh my God. let me introduce you guys to a new device. Hojo is a new device created to combat those pesky air units. When you throw, it creates a lot of random explosions in a small area, dealing lots of damage to all enemies inside it. This is another complaint that I had. I said that some of the guns weren't very good at dealing with the air mobs. Yeah, as I said, this was like a, like a five-page document. Actually, I think it was more. Yeah, there's a lot. Hoju can also be paired with some new kudos that were added to the game, where it creates oh, some boy. Um, cool effects. Okay, that's a lot better. Another big issue that you guys had was about farming currency. 
most of the feedback was about mm -hmm. how difficult it was to actually farm currency. So we True. took a step back and we rearranged every single deposit in the map so that they are located where the player actually goes. Not only that, but to encourage a little bit more of exploration, we ended up creating a new deposit type. So one of the things that came up a lot during playtest was performance. Mm -hmm. And we did a pass through the game, cleaning up everything, and now the game can run on a Steam Deck on 55 to 60 FPS in single no big deal. player mode. And also, I didn't know they the did game this. run on an integrated graphics on a computer that has no graphics cards whatsoever. Jesus. Also, please keep in mind that the game is still in the middle of development, so there's still a lot of room for improvement. I just realized that this video is getting a bit big, so let's quickly go through some of the features that we worked on. We've made a cool new revise system that takes into account... I didn't talk about this because I never played with anybody else, and if I did, they never died. I guess this is for, like, the other people on the team that were, like, not as good as I was, which makes sense. Every single yeah. upgrade that you've bought in the shop... It's just how it is. ...and that I spend a lot of time making a cool video that I'm not going to be able to show you guys right now. Mm -hmm. There's also a cool new post-game screen that shows every single set of the match and also a breakdown of all your DPS. Yeah, a lot of games. So you know what was really missing? Some dopamine directly into your brain. So that's why we made an unlock system. Uh -huh. We're also introducing a couple of new maps. The first one, called Loner's mm -hmm. Camp, is your base camp. You can roam around, interact with some NPCs while you wait for your friends to join you. Also, please, it's an alpha, so don't mind all the placeholders. I actually didn't know they were doing this. This is good. The next map is a yeah. gameplay map, and it's called Twilight Dam, and it's set in the same biome as the first map, Train Plateau. On this new map, you can find some new art, some new lighting, and maybe some new enemies to fight. Yeah, that was like a big bit of feedback, because like people felt like the game felt repetitive, and so we're trying to like add in new maps and like just new stuff to just make it feel different. Pretty simple, actually. Last but not least, I should mention that we took the time to rebalance every single upgrade in the game. And also, our upgrades are now called Curios. Speaking of Curios, we added a whole new bunch of them. So let's start with the Shockwave. Oh, also, please keep in mind that some Curios names are not final. Shockwave is an AoE damage dealing Curio that deals more damage the more you fall. The AoE size and damage are all affected by how much you fall. This Kudio was also an idea... That seems story. very broken. ...sent by my boss, Mr. Baldy himself. No, wait. Um, Mr. Gold himself. I'm also thinking of making the icon for this Kudio like a, a bald wig or something. So, if you guys want to... Oh, Jesus Christ. That's fine. Do it. That's fine with me. Go ahead. Do whatever you want to do. Yeah, do it. Uh, it was that, uh, yeah, I suggested this one. I, I also wanted uh, the dash to have, like, a damage component to it. Like, um, uh, the Athena in uh, Hades. I don't know if they've added that or not. See that? Let me know in the comments below. Yeah, like Demon Hunter. Yeah. Next, we have the dash shot. Whenever you use the air gear, while you have the dash oh. shot Kuryo equipped, you will actually shoot bullets all around you. The bullets... Okay. We'll also okay. auto yeah. aim to nearby enemies. Static yeah. dash Great. is a kudio awesome. that's a little bit different. First, you run around and you charge it up. Mm -hmm. Then, after you charge it up, you unleash it by using the gear dash, and then you do. Oh, this is just like the um uh, in the first Descendant, uh, the the operator like character Bunny had the same mechanic. A lot of damage to nearby enemies, and this yeah, this one's really good. Even a little bit after the gear dash ends. I already showed mm -hmm. you guys device projectiles before, but now I'm going to explain how it works. Every time a device activates, it creates this bullet spawner that keeps shooting bullets all around itself. Fuck? I said activate because devices have different activation times. For instance, a Stalo might activate up to three times, while Shamuska or Friaka only activate once. Yeah, we are trying to get it on console. People have been asking about that. I don't know what the status on that is, but yeah. The ghost story Kurio is pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. You get it, it spawns some ghosts, the ghosts deal damage. It's easy. This time I, I think yeah, I think I asked Oh god. Yeah. 
<laughs> Bible, it's yes. It's really common in Survivor games. I, I'm, I'm per I don't know if this is one of mine or not. I feel like it probably was. Oh, boy. It's as common as the Bible. Yeah. And finally, we have Empowered Shot. This one is a little bit more complex, but let's go. Empowered Shot works on top of your fast reload. The more you activate your fast reload correctly, the more stacks of Empowered you get. On the bottom left, this was another one. Yeah. you can see how many stacks of Empowered you get. If you have 12 stacks, mm -hmm. that means that the first 12 bullets in your magazine will do a lot garlic. more damage. Yeah. And the more fast reloads you get in a row, the bigger your stack is. Until you get all 100% of your magazine size buffed up. But the thing is, if you miss a fast reload, you lose, you it lose all? every single yeah. stack. And you have to build it up all over again. Makes sense. And there you go. That's everything I wanted to show you guys. And I'll end up on a high note, showing how everything comes together on a high level match. So thank you all. And don't forget that the next playtest is from April 10th to April 17th. So it's already going on. And please come and play the game and have fun and send us feedback so we can improve for the next one. Yeah, this is a oh, lot better. And also don't forget to wishlist the game on Steam. Bye bye, guys. What game is it? Tom Picnic. It's like one of the games we're publishing. And uh, they uh, they made a video and I was like, all right, I'll watch the video. And uh, there it is. Holy shit. I, I, I'm... It, it's definitely like... Uh, it, it, it's very cool for me. I'll link you guys at the video. And uh, it's very cool for me because for how long I've spent playing games and then complaining about the games... It's great to see the thing that I was like, you should do this, like, happen. Like, that's that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's great. Do the same game, but with swords and melee combat? What do you think the odds are that one of the weapon weapons that I suggested was a two-handed weapon that was a melee attack weapon? It's like a 100% chance. Like, I did that. It's just that that's going to take a bit longer to do. Yeah, of course I added. Of course I asked for that. Absolutely. Make a melee character? Yeah, yeah. We'll see what happens, all right, guys? I, I don't want to give too much stuff and, you know, uh, you know, any other types of, you know, oh, yeah, this is what it's going to be or anything else. But it's the first game you published? Um, well, we have a number of games uh, that we're publishing uh, that, like... Publicly, we have, oh God. Okay, let me make sure I don't fuck this up. Two games. There's two games. Yes. Uh, so Rumble Club and Atomic Picnic. Uh, those are the first two we're, we're publishing that you guys know about. Yeah, that's it. When are you publishing a gotcha game? Oh, we'll see what happens, all right? Gotcha mechanics coming? Yeah, well, just chill the fuck out. And uh, yeah, publicly, so you have more in store? Well, yeah, obviously we have other games in store. But like Atomic Picnic was one of the first ones that we started going with and like working with. Oh. And so this There's has also... been probably the uh, the longest project. And, uh, you know, they've obviously put a lot of work into to changing a lot of this stuff. And uh, I mean, I I'm pretty happy. I'm actually really happy because we had a conversation with them like maybe like a month ago or something like that. And I went into it and I was like, okay, well, the game needs a lot of changes. And like, I, I want to have like this change and that change. And I was like kind of concerned. And then like, uh, it was actually um, him in the video. Like he just like proactively was like, yeah, we're doing all these things. And I was like, oh, thank God. Like he had like a whole like PowerPoint presentation for us and everything. And like, I, I was like a million fucking times more confident <laughs> after that shit happened. Got to mention a uh, video as made by Josh Drive Hayes. Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen which uh, which one that is. Pal World Clone Win. Yeah, we'll see what happens. And uh, Sweet Professionals. Yeah, exactly. And so, um, yeah, I'll probably play the Atomic Picnic uh, demo maybe sometime this weekend or next week also and uh, try to get into it.